Hey everybody, coming at you from my gear room, uh, where I love to spend my free time <laughs> when I'm not outdoors. Um, due to work and the holidays and a lot of other reasons and not having any time off, uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to get out and film a shelter video like I was planning, but that's okay because it's going to give me time to just kind of sit down with you and talk about a bunch of different stuff that I've wanted to talk about and hit on. And, uh, some of the stuff I got from Christmas and some of the new uh, the new gear, I'm going to go over some of that. I'm going to go over some of the stuff that was in uh, the pat the last video that I have discovered. Uh, <clears throat> this is the Franken Shelter, <laughs> short for Frankenstein, because it's been burnt, cut, patched, sewed up so many different times. But <laughs> basically, this and a floor. And a whole bunch of paracord is going to be what that shelter is. And whenever it gets good and cold and I've got a weekend off, I'm going to go out and film this. Okay, So that's what's coming up in the future. And then there's another shelter that I'm, uh, a couple of, two more shelters I'm building. And one of them is a <clears throat> stealth camo hidden bug out kind of shelter. And it's, it's just it's going to be radical. Just the way it's built, the shape of it, it's, just, it's going to be completely different from anything that I've ever built in the past. And I'm still working on it now. I'm having to sew everything up. I finally got all the materials. So that's going to be another cool thing that I'm going to be coming up with. Um, so now, <clears throat> let's move on down to the other end of the table there and and, and uh, see what we got. I've got a bunch of cool odds and ends here that I want to show and talk about. Uh, <clears throat> I have a lot of Moras, and I've never had a tan one. So... I got a new Mora Companion tan. That's pretty cool. All right, you know, you never go wrong with a Mora. I've seen these around a lot, and it's a spork. It's a tactical spork. You know, a spoon and a fork by K Bar. And inside the handle, it's even got a neat little serrated knife. <laughs> Isn't that cool? But uh, the way that thing's made up is it's it's made to look like the handle of a of an actual K bar, <laughs> which is so cool. Let me put my hand behind it. <laughs> I know a lot of you may have seen that, but that's <clears throat> we'll see how good that does. I'll use that in a in a eating video coming up pretty soon. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I've never owned an LT right knife in the past, and when I did get an LT right knife, instead of just getting a normal one, I decided to get one with the Hidden Woodsman logo on it. Because I love Hidden Woodsman. It's an awesome company. But uh, when Hidden Woodsman sells these things, they didn't supply the sheaths. You have to buy the sheath separately. And uh, the sheath comes from, I think it's called DLT Trading. And I think it's made by a company called JRE. And uh, you can get one, you can get a regular sheath with just the belt. Or you can get one with the dangler and you can get one with the ferro rod. And they make a right hand and a left hand. I think this was 40 bucks, and uh, so that's pretty cool right there. Now I got a, I got the full setup right there. Normally I'll carry a machete and a knife attached together, but whenever I'm going to carry an axe, now I can carry just a knife like this, which is pretty neat. And I finally broke down. I kept hear, hearing about these Arc Arcturus survival blankets, and unlike the grabber blanket. The grabber blankets, you just buy them and they come in a plastic uh, bag. And this thing comes in a bag that is made out of the same material. Now, <clears throat> I could see a use for this of some kind. Not real sure, but the fact that it's the same material, I think I could see a use for that. But it's right what everybody was saying, that these blankets are a lot thicker. They're a lot more expensive than the grabber blankets, but the grommets on the end and how they're made, this canvas on them, is incredible. This is this is so much better than the grabber. Um, I gotta let me grab a grabber and I'll show you the difference. Trashing on the grabber blankets because I've always loved the grabber blankets, but <clears throat> it's not quite as thick when you feel the difference in the two. But I want you to see on the end of this how small the eyelet is. And this is like a piece of vinyl. That's what that end looks like. Now, the Arcturus, this is like a, uh, a heavy canvas. 
not like a vinyl, like a heavy canvas. And this this ring is, it's much bigger. See the, see the difference in the, the grommets right there? So this is a lot more expensive, but we'll see how that works. <clears throat> I wanted to show that right there real quick. So let me throw all that down. Now the other thing, uh, shovels. I've always used these folding military shovels. And... Uh, <clears throat> When you order these online and you don't buy them in person, you could wind up with a piece of junk, which is very, very bad. And so I went to, <clears throat> normally when I go to Marietta, Georgia, I go to this place called the Army Navy Discount Center. Well, there's this place called Hodge Army Navy. And it's been there at least 50 years, because when I was a little kid, I remember it was there. And the building is old, 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 old. But there's two buildings side by side, and they're big enough you could park a C-130 probably. And inside it's a huge building but the back of the building's all junked up and covered in dust and the front of it you can just you can tell it's got some age it's got some old stuff but i wanted to go there and get a genuine gi real deal shovel and they didn't have any they got a lot of real old antique surplus stuff stuff there that's real expensive because it's rare so i got to looking around and they had this shovel and I asked the guy, I said, you don't have any genuine GI shovels? He said, no, all we got these ones are made by Red Rock. Well, I got to looking at it and feeling of it, and this is very, very, very thick. So, and I asked the guy, and he, he was a former Marine. I said, are these as good as the genuine GI issue? And he said, those are actually thicker than the ones we got in the military. So, I went ahead and broke down and bought one. So, because the others, the others I've, I've been up. So, Anyway, that thing right there, that's, a, that's another piece right there. That's another piece that I've got that I'm going to be trying out. Because some of you, some of my longtime viewers, I did the <clears throat> snake hole pit shelter years ago. And I've got some updates to that. I'm going to do a snake hole pit 2021. And hopefully that'll be in January or February. So, now while I was there and I bought that, I also saw this thing. It's a solid shovel. And it's made by Red Rock, and it's called a Jeep shovel. And uh, it's pretty heavy duty. And it's got this, this large crease in it, I think, that'll keep it from bending. And it's got a handle. But the thing is, is this thing weighs about as much as the folding shovel. So I went ahead. I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to test this out see how it works. And it didn't come with a sheath. So I thought, I guess I'm going to have to make something for it. And uh, I wound up having an extra one of these. And what I did, I haven't cut this off yet, but I cut it. I just did this the other day to see if it would fit. But it turns out that one of these actually fits on it, which is pretty cool. You just fit it on there, you know, after after cutting it. So that's kind of neat that it's got that, that it, I've got that for carrying it now. So let's set that down there. And uh, one other small thing before we get into talking about machetes. Oh, I got a new machete, too. <laughs> Me and Nick got matching ghillie suits. <laughs> now, yeah, these ain't these ain't no genuine American sniper type deal, but they are. They're from they're from China, but they were pretty cheap, and uh, they are ghillie suits. So <clears throat> these are going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> let's, let's see how this thing goes on. <laughs> You have to kind of fluff this up because of the way it's made, but there's a window here that you can see out of. Oh, here it is, right here in the front. <laughs> I told you on the last video, it's all about fun in the woods. All right, let's see. We are going to have a ball with this suit, me and Nick. We got matching suits. They're, they're both about the same. <laughs> great time with that. <laughs> and while I'm standing here, I got the camera out here away from the table, I'll show you one other thing. This is my normal kayak paddle. Okay, It's a two-piece two -piece paddle. All right. That snaps together just like that. Well, I got to reading and surfing around 
and uh, discovered that you get more stroke from a longer paddle. And this, I haven't tried it yet because it's been so cold, but this is a Sea Sense Extreme. Still got the sticker on it. I got it off Amazon. It's a, a smaller diameter, but it's a it's close to it's close to 10 inches longer than the other one. And it's shaped different. It's cupped with square ends. And uh, I'm going to put it, let's see. I'm going to put it touching the floor. Put it touching the floor. It's that much longer. That's not a good view. Let me turn it around here. <laughs> okay, it's, it's that much longer than my other one. My original one is, uh, my original one's 87 inch, and this one's 96 inch. And I was reading the reviews, and the reviews were saying that not only is it, and it is very lightweight. And <clears throat> when, I, when I first started looking, I wanted to get a, uh, a, uh, a carbon fiber one, but some of the people at work were saying that the carbon fiber ones are real bad about breaking. And so I got to looking around to see if there was anything better than what I had. And this one, people were bragging, saying that the length of these things will give you more power. Now, the, uh, the original one I can use in creeks, but when I go up rivers, upstream, I can't wait to try this baby out. That's going to be fantastic right there. All right. All right, mo moving along to other gear. Now, not to insult anybody, but <clears throat> this is just my opinion. <laughs> There was a company called United Cutlery, and to me, I always kind of considered them a junky company because everything they sold was had like dragons and flames and skulls and just all kinds of fantasy swords. You know, it was it was more for collectors. You know, people that like played video games and wanted to have like really cool stuff on their wall. You know, fantasy swords and daggers and things like that. So. I never really was interested in them from any kind of a camping, bushcrafting, survival type aspect. Well, I took a chance in Christmas of 2019. They, they're tied into some division called Honshu Boshing. And I had seen the blades, and I saw this parang, and... Uh, I like the shape of it, so I bought it. Now, as usual, what's really cool is I don't know if this was something that they just happened upon, but they, the length that just happens to fit right on here, right onto their snap, is just the right length for a proper lanyard, which is cool. So that's cool on the sheath. Let me pull this out. Now, I just happened to see this thing, and I like the shape of it, and... It happened to be on clearance. It, I didn't think it was on sale. It was on clearance. And so it was regular, like 100 bucks. And I think I got this on clearance for like 65 I think, or 67 I think. I thought, well, it's worth giving a chance. And it being hollow ground, I thought maybe it would chip. So I took this, and I beat around with it for a while and chopped with it. And it's held an edge. It's really good. The only thing is, is for, for really heavy wood processing, this thing will stick. This does not replace the axe. This, this is more along the lines of small stuff and, and shelter building and removing bark and, and, and making uh, twig huts, thatched huts, uh, making the framework for like a super shelter. So, but anyway, I got that and I was very, very happy with it. And uh, when I got that one, the first thing I did is I added a saw to it. I added a silky saw to it. Okay, so this with this right here, this is a this is a nice shelter building outfit, having that parang and a silky saw. Well, I just happened to notice they have a kukri, <laughs> and so I got this for Christmas of 2020, and about the same sheath. It's got this one one place on it right here, and what I wanted to do is I had this martini made in Finland, and I just happened to have. I just happened to not have a place to put it. <laughs> it's a very, very nice uh, knife with a nice black handle. But that thing, and it comes in a black sheath that kind of matches this. 
And so it's funny, the, the day I got this thing, the first thing I did was I, I, I attached this to it. And I put on the Velcro sticky back and then I put some paracord around it and tied it off real good, good and then the hot glued the ends. And as usual, this one's just like the other one. Right where the snap is, just happens to be the right length to secure the lanyard. So let's pull this out and take it with it. And I was so excited about this. It's such a cool shape for a kukri that the first thing I did is, is, is uh, Christmas Day, I carried it outside and there was some old red oak out there. And I thought, man, I hope this thing is as good as the, the, the uh, parang. And so I went out there and started chopping with it. And sure enough, the edge, that, that fine hollow ground edge has held up very, very well. No chips, no dings. I really like that. And I think I got this on sale too around Christmas time. And it's a it's a it's that fancy stainless steel. It's uh I can't see without my glasses. It's that CR something. CR two C R thirteen, I think. I can barely see it without my glasses. But uh, y'all know what it is. It's not 0440. It's it's that is some good stuff right there. So <clears throat> me and that is gonna get along good. Cause like I said before Machetes are like pocketbooks and shoes are to women. You can't just have one. <laughs> All right, a few other things I want to talk about. Last video, we showed a uh, MSS bivy and a mystery bivy. I'm going to talk about that again here too. But <clears throat> in there, I used a bag. Instead of using the patrol bag or the intermediate bag, I used my M1945 Arctic Mountain Bag because it's a down bag. Okay. And it doesn't even, this thing's so old, it doesn't even have the, it doesn't even have the, uh, the MSN, NSN tag on it. Instead, it's got, it's got some printing on it. As you can see, it's actually got black ink on it where it's printed on. So, anyway, <clears throat> I had this bag, it's a very old bag, and when I was in that same place, when I was in that, uh, Hodge Army Navy store, I was looking through all the miscellaneous junk in there. And I found this, and I thought, wow, what is this thing? And what this is, is this is a, this is before the MSS, and this was a sleeping bag cover, and it's an M1945, and I couldn't believe it, and I saw it on there. And uh, it's funny, they had a full M MSS there for $179, along with all the other stuff that was really high. <laughs> and so I saw this thing right here, and I thought, well, this is just a, this is just an olive drab case. It's just a cover. It's like a canvas. And I was like, yeah, I'm not real interested. But then it was a price on it, only 20 bucks. And I thought, well, 20 is not that bad. So I got a little bit more interested. And right on here it says, case, sleeping bag, M1945 water repellent. Not waterproof, but water repellent. And it's also supposed to be windproof. So <clears throat> I pulled up on the internet and got to looking that these things were going for like $50, that these are kind of rare. So I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. So anyway, long story short, this bag here, I've only used it down to like the 30s and been pretty comfortable. Below the 30s, I've been a little bit chilled. Well, I took this whole bag, all right? In December, I only had three days off. <laughs> and one of the days off was Christmas Day. And so Christmas night, I went outside for a little while with this and I put this cover on and it got down to 18 degrees and I laid outside on, in this at 18 degrees and I was not cold, not cold at all. I didn't get hot, but I didn't get cold. I was very, very comfortable with this and I was very extremely surprised. <laughs> so this made a little bit of a difference and I, I don't know, maybe it's the fact it's a very thick material. And I don't know, maybe it just maybe it really was a wind blocker because this is this is not real thick stuff, but it's got the down feathers in it, down uh, material, and uh, it made a huge difference. It went down to 18, so <clears throat> that whole system right there. One of these days, I'm gonna really test it out if it gets colder than that. <laughs> MSS modular sleep system. It's a four-piece system, and I'm not sure how many branches of the military uses it. But this is one of the older woodland camo ones, and I showed this bivy in that video. 
and in a much older video I showed all the parts and pieces in it. But what the four parts and pieces are is a stuff sack for putting everything in and then of course the camo BB cover and then you've got the green patrol bag yeah this is the green patrol bag it's not a real real thick bag this is good for like mild weather and then you've got the Godzilla intermediate bag which is big and heavy and thick now here's the thing the reason they call it a modular system is with these four pieces you pack them all in okay if it's summertime or rainy or hot you just use the bivy if it's mild temperatures you use the green bag if it's a little colder you use the black bag if it's really cold you just use the two the both bags together now <clears throat> A few times since I've had this, I've used both bags, and that's just because I'm a I'm a kind of a cold sleeper. And once that I can think of, maybe twice, I'm, I'm trying to remember, but I usually like to have a tarp overhead, but once, maybe twice since I've owned this, <clears throat> I've slept with no tarp. I've just crawled inside and zipped this thing up. Now, if it's really, really cold, it's not a good idea to do that. Even though this is Gore-Tex, you'll still get a bunch of frost on it. So, anyway, most of you know what that is, but for some of us, some of you that don't, that's the mil the modular sleep system. Now, the mystery bivy. All right, I heard all kinds of things about this mystery bivy because I hadn't identified it, and it was. It turns out that what this is is the precursor to the MSS is a rare system that wasn't out very long and it wasn't available to all the branches of the military just the Marines and it was called the, U the USMC ECW extreme cold weather system and this was part of it and people are telling me that it was very rare and what it is is it came with this was a five piece system it had the cover and it had one bag one green bag and then I had a special hat, sleep hat, and then a pair of booties to keep your feet warm, and a green stuff sack. Not a black one like that one, but a green one. And the whole system is very rare because there weren't many of them. And <clears throat> I looked it up and people sent me some links, and everything down to the minorest of details, like even this green that went around the hood, and was all the same. And wherever that US was, right here there was no NSN number on it but where this US number US is put on there was a picture up there's a there's a set on eBay and it said extremely rare new never open and it was three hundred dollars <laughs> and they, sh they showed a picture of the bivy sack and the green bag side by side and they both had the black US emblem and it showed a green bag and the big old hat and the booties so this is a part of a rare system and I'm, I'm very happy to have it so but <clears throat> now that I know about the booties and the hat and this US emblem now I can look for the other parts and pieces of it which is awesome this system here's a dime a dozen these things are everywhere and I think when they went to the digital camo uh, I think they, they, they changed the system a little bit, and I think they actually improved it a little bit. So, But anyway, hopefully one day I'll find the other parts to that system, and that'll be so cool. <clears throat> now, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about, uh, I think that's basically it for all the, the new gear that I've got to try out that I can recall. But <clears throat> the Ontario SP-53, right? I bragged and bragged and bragged and bragged about this thing. And said it was the greatest thing since sliced bread and it is i love it this is a fantastic machete i absolutely love this machete i still love this machete and people are asking since i got the tarava scrama or scrama what my thoughts are and i've often said they're they're like oh do you not like this all of a sudden and i'm like well do you have a favorite do you have a new favorite or are they tied well here's the thing this is what i have to say and i don't i don't like to say it but uh, you people at Ontario, you people have no brains <laughs> because you have discontinued the majority of the SP line. There's a few of them you've kept, but you have discontinued this. 
And not only have I talked about the SP53, but in searching around on like uh, blade forums and survivalist boards, and of course my other home, Bushcraft USA, everybody loves this. Everybody that has owned this thing has loved it. And like the people on blade forums, they're very picky about their blades. And I've read threads where they've ordered this and they're like, man, what a beast. <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm going to have to call this my new favorite simply because everybody's telling me you can't buy these anymore. That if you can find them, you're darn lucky. So yes, I still love this. Uh, maybe all y'all can text or call or write or email the people at Ontario and beg them to bring this back. Because I don't know why. Somebody said that they were concentrating more on kitchen knives. Well, if you're making something as nice as this, you need to keep making it. And, and not worry about the kitchen knives. So, Now, on to this. <clears throat> Y'all saw the video about two videos ago where I attached the Mora Garberg to this. One of the things that I forgot to mention completely about is about this lanyard. Now... It's a good idea to have a lanyard for day and a lanyard for night. All right. All you got to do is make it in a loop. Now this is a reflective paracord. Now my friend, uh, he is on YouTube, the Polish Pickle. <laughs> He's ex-military guy. He sent me, and I didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. He sent me some reflective paracord, and he said of all places they sell it at Lowe's. And I'm fixing to show you here in just a minute what it looks like in the darkness or when the light hits it. But with this right here, what I would say is if you're traveling at night or using it at night or whenever you're camping or whatever, put this on. And the way you can do is you just do it with a lark's head. Okay? And during the day or when you're in the snow, now everybody keeps telling me on YouTube whenever I've shown this that this color looks kind of pink. It's not. In real life, it's a, a, a rescue orange color. But you just make it in the proper size loop. And this is plenty big enough on the scrama. Some of these other blades have it so small it's not as easy to do. But you just slide it through and pull it through the lark's head right there. And then there's your there's your lanyard right there. And uh, if you ever see people doing this, put their hand through and put it like this, especially if they're doing a knife review. <laughs> They are not leading you correctly. <laughs> the best way, and I, I did a video in the past, there's five different ways of doing these lanyards, but the absolute best is to turn the knife around backwards and hang it off your thumb and then just pick the blade up and turn it like that. And it locks it in, just like that. Okay, And that way you can have like a light grip on it when you're doing your chopping. So, But anyway, I'm fixing to show you. I'm going to cut the lights out and then we're going to I'm going to show you the, the reflective qualities of this stuff right here and uh, what it looks like. So, But anyway, that's <clears throat> I wanted to finally put to bed the how all those years, I've got all these machetes behind me and I love these machetes. And all those years I always said that the Ontario SP53 was the best. I still love it. It's great. But... I, I can't recommend it anymore because I've stopped making it. I mean, why would I tell people, you know, oh, this is the best when you can't buy it anymore? So, you know, you can still buy this one. I love this one. <laughs> and a lot of these other machetes behind me, <clears throat> there's some K-bars that I like. I got another Ontario I like. There's a bunch of Condors that I like, you know. So, but I can only really right, right now at this point recommend what, what you can buy. <laughs> so... Cut the lights out and let's take a look at this lanyard real quick. So here's a roll of that reflective paracord. It's called, uh, made by Blue Hawk. And it came from Lowe's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Kind of turn it around. Let's wave this light back here. See if you can see the... There's certain, certain ways that you can see the reflective qualities of it. If you ever get any, it's also good for guy lines for your tarp so you're not tripping over stuff at night. But it's got those little streaks of that reflective material in it, which is very cool. Now for the final segment of this video. Uh, 
In the last video, I talked about Ray's axe. I told the story of Ray's axe. Um, <clears throat> I got probably more response to that than anything I've ever said on any video. Uh, more comments. Uh, several of the comments. Uh, one of them is, how could the family part with that? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit more backstory because last time when I talked about it, it was only... I only talked about it about four or five minutes during the uh, coffee percolating process. So, a little bit more. One thing, real quick, this is my grandfather's Sager axe, double bit, made in Warren, Pennsylvania. He bought this back in the 60s or 70s, and I grew up as a little kid watching him swing this. Now, <clears throat> this is the original handle, and it's got these two humps on each side, and that's something relevant right there to remember because... This axe, Ray's axe, has a curve to it and a straight part. It doesn't have the two humps. That's obviously not the original handle, even though this thing was in terrible shape when I got it. No telling how many handles it went through. And this was all rusty. But anyway, a little bit. I want to give a little bit, a little backstory on this. Uh, and real quick, people are asking, was there a name on it somewhere? No, there was no name on it. And this was solid rust. Not only did I have to sand, I even had to grind on it some of it to get it into the shape that it was in. Uh, you can see, even after the grinding, it seems like it's bigger than the sager. So I don't think it's a sager. I don't know what kind it is. I may never know. Now, when I set these on the table, okay, and I get them to where they're about the, the same length here, you can see how much I had to cut off the handle to save the handle off of Ray's axe. Because the handle's in terrible shape, and for those of you that heard the story, you'll understand why I kept the handle. And then I rehung it, and it, it does have a crack in it right here. And I'm kind of ashamed to show how it was hung, because it was in such horrible shape. But I wanted to save the handle. Uh, now, a little bit more of a backstory on that. <clears throat> when I went to the estate sale, I always talked to the people running the estate sale, because... I love history and I want to know a little bit more about the people that live there and things. So when I talked to them, uh, the woman had died. I went to the estate sale like a year ago and the woman had died in 2019. And the dad, who was a doctor, died around 2009, I think, or 2010, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 or 11 years. So the house was like a three-story house. And in the 70s, it was incredible. Because you could tell the place had aged a little bit. And you can tell that the woman had lived there by herself for a long time. Because there was a lot of parts of the house that obviously nobody had been in in years. And there was just stuff left behind. So, anyway, uh, the dad was dead. The mom was dead. Of course, Ray, he passed away in 72 or 73 when he was 14. Uh, the older sister had moved far away, somewhere like California or somewhere. So all that was left was the brother. And I think the brother had moved to uh, somewhere around Atlanta, Fulton County, I think. And he came back for the estate sale so that they could empty out the house and sell it. And So anyway, here's a story. I went in, I was walking through the house looking at everything. Three-story house, had a two-story deck with a spiral staircase. All the furniture was just wild from the 70s and 80s uh taking expensive stuff but it was all real old just real retro it's a it's a, a a designer's dream to go in there and get some of that furniture and several bedrooms upstairs uh downstairs big nice office with all these medical books on these shelves covered in dust look like nobody's been there in years so i go out into the, the carport and I'm looking around, and there's a room off the carport, and I'm looking, and there's these real old tackle boxes and old fishing rods, older than I care to, to want. And then there's, there's like little bits and pieces of camping equipment that's so old I don't want it. And I'm looking over on the wall, and there's some shovels and some rakes. And then I look, and behind this rack, there's a, a piece of wood and handle. And so I'm like, well, I wonder what that is. I reach back and grab it, and it is Ray's axe. I grab this at the double bit. I pull it up. The handle's loose and wobbly and all cracked. And I'm like, that's a double bit. Doesn't have a price on it. Probably didn't even see it back there. So I carry the axe over to the guy in the carport. There's a guy working with this state sale in the carport helping them load trucks. So I say, hey, how much for this? And he looks at it. 
takes his roll of tape, writes on with a magic marker, sticks it on the handle. There you go. Three dollars. And I'm like, man, you can't beat that. <clears throat> I'll take this thing home and get a new, new handle and put it in and I'll be good to go. So I carry it up and the brother is up there at the register. He's laughing. He's smiling. He's talking to everybody. Hey, how's it going? And so uh, <clears throat> he's like, he's like, hey, how you doing and everything, and I'm setting all this stuff on the counter, and then I set the axe down on the counter, and <clears throat> he's smiling, and then when he sees the axe, he does this. He's like, his mouth is, he just, motionless. And I said, uh, I said, is there something wrong? You don't want to sell this? And he said, that's Ray's axe. And I, and I was like, what? He said, that is Ray's axe. He said, I cannot believe that is still on this property. And so that's when he started to tell me the story and uh y'all heard the story in the other one but <clears throat> basically bits and pieces of it for those of you that didn't hear it uh ray died ray was a cub scout wanting to be a boy scout he always wanted an axe his dad bought him as an axe as an incentive to learn how to safely use an axe so he bought it for him and before he could give ray the axe he passed away at the age of 14. And I didn't get into the details. I didn't want to ask because I was surprised he was telling me as much as he did. But he passed away at 14, and basically his dad went into a deep depression because his dad was a doctor, and his dad's job was to save people. But he couldn't save his own son from, I don't know, whatever happened. So anyway, and then the dad, basically, long story short, every time the dad had a bad day at the hospital or just felt depressed or had a bad day, he would take the axe and go out into the backyard and just chop and just relieve his frustrations and just chop and chop and wouldn't, wouldn't talk to nobody. And he said, I know my dad, when he had a bad day, he would come in and he would put on blue jeans and a flannel shirt and he'd go out to the garage and then go out to the backyard. And he said that whenever neighbors had tree branches fall, he'd take the wheelbarrow and push the wheelbarrow down the road to their house and get their limbs up and bring them home so he'd have something to chop. So, big bulk of the comments on this was that the, they didn't understand how a family could let go of that axe. Well, the thing is, the mom's dead, the dad's dead, Ray's dead, the sister was gone, all, basically all that was left of the family was a brother and a sister. And I think that for the brother, it brought back too many bad memories of seeing what his dad went through and brought back memories of his brother you know so but anyway that was more to the backstory of it uh i like flea markets i like yard sales but if you ever go to estate sales where they're literally emptying the contents of a house there's stories to be told you know ask questions ask the people that are working the estate sale and you'll be surprised at some of the things they've told they'll tell you <laughs> so anyway not meaning to depress you i just wanted to give you some more information on that since there were so many comments on it and uh, I'll keep the axe. I'll use it. I'll keep it. It's it's got a good home with me. Nobody wants it, but I certainly want it. So there's a. I'll build my own good memories into this axe, and I'll try to keep the handle as long as I can, just out of respect, you know. So anyway, here's looking forward to a really fun 2021. Can't be worse than 2020. We're we, it's got to be better. We're going to be camping, cooking, hiking. Uh, maybe even hiding out in some ghillie suits <laughs> so y'all stay happy stay positive do what you want to do stay healthy and you know get out and enjoy life enjoy your family go camping and, and uh you know whatever it takes to have a quality of life so till the next one hopefully we'll be outdoors with franken shelter or maybe my new camo stealth shelter i'm designing <laughs> till then have fun with life, get out, camp when you can, and we shall see you in the next one.